what are the types of febrile seizures there are broadly speaking two types of febrile seizures which are seen we have simple febrile seizures which are seen in about 70 to 75 percent cases in fact for all practical purpose they are simple febrile seizure unless we specify and second are the complex febrile seizures which are seen in about 25 to 30 percent cases these are the percentage distribution in the population in a single child it is usually either simple or complex not a mix of the two so complex febrile seizures uh, in certain textbooks they are also mentioned as atypical febrile seizures right so what is simple febrile seizure simple febrile seizure will be a febrile seizure as we discussed it will have three characteristics first of all they will be generalized seizures for example most commonly they will be gtcs variety in bracket you can write they are never focal AOCN guidelines mention them as non-focal febrile seizures. So, never focal are simple febrile seizures. Second feature of them will be, they will be, uh, the duration of these will be up to or less than 15 minutes. So, it will never exceed 15 minutes. And third feature, they, there will be no recurrence of the seizure within 24 hours. Once a seizure has happened and aborted, another seizure will not happen within the next 24 hours. They are called as simple febrile seizure. What are complex febrile seizures? Complex febrile seizure is the opposite of this. Any one of the following, you will call it as complex febrile seizure. If they are focal seizures or if the duration of the seizure is more than 15 minutes, please remember that up to 15 minutes, including 15 minutes will be simple. More than 15 minutes, 15.01 minute will be your complex febrile seizure and recurrence or if there is recurrence within 24 hours. They will be called as complex or atypical febrile seizures. Now coming to the management of febrile seizures. First of all is your uh, domiciliary therapy. What is domiciliary therapy? You know, uh, all febrile seizure children will not be admitted in hospital. They will be getting their first seizure episode or subsequent recurrences when they are not in hospital setting. So, they will get fever and they will get seizure at their home. So, you have to educate the parents how to treat them and that is what you call as domiciliary therapy. So, parental education is a must. Explain about the disease, explain about if the seizure is happening, uh, you, they should know, you know. Uh, the child should be put in a proper position. You should ensure that the child is not having all these desi nuskas which are there where you are, you know, uh, putting a shoe to the nose of the child. Time should not be wasted in doing all such things. So, parental education about the disease is important. Then abortive medication to stop seizure should be given before it comes to medical attention because it takes time for the child to be taken from home to the hospital. You cannot allow the seizure to continue. Till what time you should wait and then give abortive medication? According to AOCN, it is if the seizure lasts more than 3 to 5 minutes, give medication. According to Nelson as well as Swyman, 5 minutes. In PG entrance exam, JIPMER, about 4 or 5 years back, there was a question which had been asked, where they had asked about what is the minimum time for which you will wait and then give benzodiazepine to abort a febrile seizure. 1 minute, 2 minute. 3 minute, 5 minute. The best answer here will be 5 minute because uh, AOCN gives a range of 3 to 5 minutes and it says more than 3 to 5 minutes. So, more than 3 over. And uh, Nelson and Swyman both give a value of 5 minutes. So, 5 minutes will be the better answer for such a question if it gets repeated in your exam. Now, for domiciliary therapy, please be clear the drug of choice is intranasal midazolam in a dose of 0.2 mg per kg. Midazolam comes as sprays. There are nasal sprays available. In my practice, I do give them. They are convenient, but appropriate dosage should be advised and appropriate you should tell the parents how midazolam is to be given. So, it comes by the name of inside nasal spray. There is a midasip nasal spray. They have pediatric uh, formulation and they have adult kind of formulation as well. So, always you activate the uh, spray first of all. You shake it properly with the cap closed, then you remove it, then you do one puff with the first puff it will not go out then you give the second puff some amount will be you know the mist you will see being uh, 
distributed in the environment, then is your uh, midazolam nasal spray ready. You need to explain it to the parents. Otherwise, what they will do it in panic, they will immediately open it, put it in the nostril and try to do it. Two puffs will be wasted, right? So, what you do is you activate it, then after it has been activated, one puff, nothing will come out. Second puff, mist comes out. Your puff is, uh, your spray is now activated. D based upon how much is the dosage and concentration, one puff, two puff, one nostril, two nostril, that depends upon the age and weight of the child, you will give 0.2 mg per kg midazolam, SOS therapy, whenever child has a seizure and if it exceeds more than 3 to 5 minutes. It is preferred over rectal diazepam. Rectal diazepam not easily available suppositories, problem with, uh, you know, administration also. There are cultural issues involved with something, uh, uh, you asking the parents to put something in the anus of the child not a pleasant sensation for the parents as well as for the child when they are putting a medicine inside at the same time right what we have seen uh, in practice also even if the parents are fine what they will do is they will be scared of inserting the diazepam suppository to a adequate depth and so that suppository does not go inside the rectum it just stays at the border at the opening of the anus that is not going to be effective that is not going to produce any results. So that is why rectal diazepam, because of practical uh, difficulties, EOCN guidelines say rectal diazepam is now an alternative. You should use intranasal midazolam. Buccal midazolam, useful but not available in our country. The normal midazolam which, you, which is there, we sometimes do give it as a buccal route also, but that is not the way it is supposed to be given. At its uh, absorption is not erratic, is not uh, proper. Then once a dose has been given, you can repeat it after 5 minutes if needed and urgent medical attention should be sought if it does not get aborted. Now second is intermittent prophylaxis. Intermittent prophylaxis will be indicated where uh, the parents are staying far away from home and there is a child that multiple seizure episodes are, are likely to happen. First thing about intermittent prophylaxis is it is not indicated in the first episode of simple febrile seizure, very very important point. Now, we all have a tendency ki whenever we diagnose a patient of a simple febrile seizure, we have a tendency to start, okay, let's start clobazam in the patient. No, first episode, simple febrile seizure, you are not supposed to start it. So, when to start? It can be considered in frequent or recurrent simple febrile seizure. How frequent, how recurrent? Again, left to the treating physician. With parental anxieties there and home is away from medical access, there you will start intermittent prophylaxis. Then it can be considered in complex febrile seizure as well. You need to understand that prophylaxis will be preventing the febrile seizure from happening. It, it is different from treating a acute seizure, right? So it can be considered in complex febrile seizure and what is the drug of choice? Again, it is no longer diazepam, it is oral clobazam, 0.5. It comes by, there are multiple brand names, tablet freesium comes. So, 0.5 to 1 mg per kg per day in two divided doses are given for three days, starting from the onset of fever or febrile illness. How will you explain to the parents? But you will explain to the parents by giving medicine and tell to the mother or the father, till this child reaches six years of age, whenever the child gets any fever, whether it is due to URI, whether it is due to going out into cold weather or any other thing, Starting from the day of fever, you will for the next three days, you will give clobazam and then stop it. No need to taper, simply stop it. That is called as intermittent prophylaxis. So, if parents ask you, what if my child gets a fever, a, a, a febrile illness every two months? So, you will give oral clobazam starting from the day of fever for three days every two months because the fever is coming. If parents say no fever has happened for last one year, then no need to give clobazam for one year. That is what you call as intermittent prophylaxis. It is equally potent as continuous prophylaxis, has less side effects, better compliance and uh, it has been shown to have almost equal uh, long term neurological results as continuous prophylaxis. So that is why it is usually preferred over continuous prophylaxis. Now third is continuous prophylaxis. Continuous prophylaxis is basically use of anti-epileptic agents, the usual ones like malproid. So it will be considered in frequent complex febrile seizure, febrile status epilepticus, where there is neurodevelopmental delay or FS plus or GEFS plus with afebrile seizures also happening. These are the four scenarios where you will consider continuous prophylaxis. It is not given in simple febrile seizure. And what is the drug of choice? It is valproate. So, drug of choice for domiciliary therapy is different 
drug of choice for intermittent prophylaxis is different drug of choice for continuous prophylaxis is different please remember that there is no such thing as single drug of choice it depends upon what particular indication you are using it and there is no need for prior lfts before starting valproate in these patients once started valproate or any aed which you have started regularly daily basis you need to give it for a seizure free period of two years and then only you taper and stop it now what is the role of paracetamol or antipyretic therapy it does not prevent the occurrence of febrile seizure and thus has no role in prophylaxis see paracetamol you need to understand febrile seizure has happened fever was there and seizure has started now that seizure has started you give paracetamol you are supposed to give paracetamol but that is not going to prevent seizure has happened but you do give paracetamol not to abort the active seizure but to make the child comfortable fever is there now you need to treat fever also seizure will simple febrile seizure will be aborted in five five minutes or so right but what about the fever for that we will give antipyretics right uh, it can be given for the fever episode, not for the seizure. 15 mg per kg, if needed, can be repeated every 6 hourly. And it makes the child comfortable and afebrile. There is no role of micronutrient supplementation like zinc, vitamin D, iron supplementation. Studies have been done. They have not found any significant benefit. So, they are neither useful in treatment nor prevention of febrile seizure. And remember, most of the simple febrile seizures, they will outgrow the child by 6 years of age. So, a reassurance of the parents is important in complex or status uh, febrile status epilepticus or uh, GEFS plus or FS plus you need to follow up these patients later on. So this is all that we need to discuss about febrile seizure.